Greetings to all the lovely ladies and gentlemen out there. I'm your host, The Pro Gent, and I decided, you know what? I wanted to do a little extra thing for you guys for the end of the year. I, uh... I've been thinking about a lot of my favorite games for the year, and this year was really good. Like, absurdly good. So I'm just gonna list my top 10, give a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a reason for why it's on there, and uh, I think that'll be a nice little, little extra treat. So, let's see. Uh, number 10, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for the Nintendo Switch. This was a great choice, uh, all, all things considered in terms of gameplay design for the Xenoblade series to go. Uh, the, the combat system was greatly enhanced from the original game, and uh, I, I could give or take some of the design choices in terms of the very anime-esque look to it. Um, yeah, shocking, right? Uh, but it made it a lot more humorous, I guess. Uh, whereas the original Xenoblade was very drama-filled, uh, this one was a lot more lighthearted in quite a few places. So I'd say that that was a pretty good choice in their part. Um, kept a lot more people interested. It opened up the series to a bigger audience. So, good win on their part. Uh, number nine, Resident Evil 7. So, I'm a fan of the Resident Evil series. Uh, not a huge one, but enough of one where I think that this was probably one of the best choices that Resident Evil has gone in in some 10 years like after five and six it got so bad it, it it just was awful and seven was a great change of pace because it brought it back to what resident evil was about just being by yourself in a completely unfamiliar household or mansion or whatever and you are being chased by pretty much everything there. And the atmosphere was great, the visuals were really stunning, the story was really fantastic, um, the writing was great, and the secrets were fun. You know, uh, nothing like beating the shit out of bobbleheads, right? Uh, number eight, Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia. Fire Emblem is one of my all-time favorite series, and I am probably one of the few people that is absolutely sick and tired of the Waifu Wars series. Awakening was a good thing for the series. It brought a lot of people back into the series and it saved Fire Emblem. But I don't like Fates very much. And that's sad because I've always wanted a Fire Emblem that has a Japanese style in terms of its unit design, and that's a little disappointing for me. But Shadows of Valencia brings back a really interesting entry into the series. This was one of the games that was on the original uh, cycle of games in Japan that, were, that the series wasn't brought into America, obviously, until the early 2000s. Uh, and this one had a free-roaming aspect to it, where you could go through dungeons and fight a lot of different types of monsters to level up your characters. And your character pool was a lot smaller, so you could have people change their class to suit a scenario better, which I think was a really cool design, and it let you focus on really getting the, the few characters that you really did like up to a design and uh, power level that you were in control of. So, there's that. Right, uh, number seven. This is, uh, yet another JRPG entry into this, uh, big year for those. Entry in Odyssey 5. This is one of those series by Atlas that I fell in love with after I played one of their games. Uh, Etri and Odyssey is a dungeon explorer RPG that you make your own map, uh, when you're playing it, which I think is a fun thing to do. It's usually, it's a little more difficult than other JRPGs. It's actually very skill-based when it comes to, um, you have to build a team properly and you have to juggle abilities properly that will make your team survive and will deal enough damage to 
make your way through a labyrinth that goes to Yggdrasil, the world tree, uh, which is usually the story, obviously. Uh, and in this one, they added a shit ton of new classes, so you have a lot of different ways to build different types of teams. You can build multiple teams to actually have different experiences with uh, separate team builds. It's a very cool design, and I'm glad that that was the game that I got. I've, I'd been expecting it for over a year, and I'm really glad they finally brought it over. Number six, Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. Now, it's no surprise that Shovel Knight is easily one of the best platformers pretty much ever made. I think that it really brought back exactly what a platformer was and at its core what it should be. And the extra stories have been really great uh, since then. Uh, Plague of Shadows was a, an entirely new experience and was a breath of fresh air because I got to play more Shovel Knight and that's just all I want. And in Spectre of Torment, it's the same thing, but with Spectre Knight. And it's a really cool experience because, once again, they're fleshing out an entire character that was basically face value before. I think that this might be better than Plague of Shadows, personally, but that's just my opinion. I kind of like Spectre Knight a little bit more. Um, I look forward to more from uh, Yacht Club in terms of what they're going to be making in the Shovel Knight series, and uh, I couldn't recommend this more if you just enjoy old-fashioned platformers. Number five, Yakuza Zero. Yakuza series deserves more love. Seriously, like, no one, no one likes these games for some reason, and I don't understand why. Like, Japan is finally bringing these games over, and they're not getting enough attention. Like, the Yakuza series is sort of a comedy drama series about uh, the main character, Kiryu, who got out of the Yakuza and he's trying to make a better life for himself. And there's additional characters like Majima, who is uh, an absolute bonkers character, but he's a lot of fun too. Yakuza Zero is a lot of their backstory, and I loved that about the game. But one of the other aspects of the Yakuza series, besides the story, uh, which often involves a lot of... Uh, which often involves a lot of beating the shit out of people that you come across on the street who clearly don't like you because either they're also Yakuza or they're just street punks that... Uh, are rolling in on their with their pompadours and just going yada yada does it but you know that's that's that stuff aside there is everything to do in yakuza uh yakuza zero you can go and sing karaoke you can go and uh play with rc cars and you can play mahjong and you can go and disco dance like there is no shortage of things to do that you will spend hours just trying to have fun with mini games, and I think that that's one of the greatest aspects of the Yakuza series because you can, you can just go and do whatever, and you can just leave the story and just have a fun time. <laughs> uh, but going back to the story is also fun too because it's genuinely well written. Uh, props to Sega for all that. Number four, Mario Odyssey. So, like pretty much anybody else, I'm a fan of Mario. I have wanted a Mario in the style of Sunshine and 64 for a long time, and I think Mario Odyssey was the perfect step in the right direction. Um, after a little bit of time away from the game, since I beat it in like a week, uh, I can definitely say that it's probably one of my new favorite Mario games. I don't know if it's my favorite favorite, but it's definitely top three. I think the capture ability was easily one of the more interesting things about it. The captures throughout every world were genuinely very interesting, and a lot of the world designs were actually way more interesting than I was expecting them to be, because, you know, Mario tends to stick to 
the generic uh, ice world, grass world, a uh, fire world, uh, desert world, you know, the, the, the usual stuff. But they threw in some curveballs there. Like, I was super surprised by this. So I would totally recommend this if you have a Switch. Um, it's so worth your time. And number three, Cuphead. Man, I have been waiting for this for a long time. Cuphead is exactly the game I wanted it to be and more. I was not expecting it to be as much as it was because it, it's an indie game. A lot of the times indie games don't last very long and you get basically a very sweet but short experience. Cuphead felt a lot longer than I was expecting and I'm happy about that. Uh, simple story behind Cuphead is you're playing a little uh, cupheaded kid called Cuphead who signs his uh, soul away to the devil because he made a bad gambling choice and he has to go and beat the shit out of other people that have made contracts with the devil along with the completely innocent in this situation Mugman. Uh, there are run and gun levels where you collect coins to get new guns and special abilities and the rest of the game is all boss fights, and my god are they fun. These are sort of Contra-esque uh, and somewhat Gradia, Gradius X, uh, uh, Gradius-esque uh, fights where you're either in a plane and you're fighting uh, some constantly moving foe, uh, or you are in uh, just a little battlefield, and you're running around gunning at this person's face and trying to beat the crap out of them. Uh, the music, holy crap, this this is one of the best soundtracks I've heard in years. This really makes me think of uh, a lot of Fleischer Studio stuff, um, Merry Melody cartoons. Uh, Hollywood Steps Out is obviously one of my favorites, and I couldn't get enough of a lot of the video game and uh, and old time cartoon references that were snugged in there. So I, I think Cuphead was definitely one of the best games probably I've ever played. So definitely go and try it out. Number two, Neo. Okay, so I am a big Dark Souls guy. I originally played the first game right after I got out of high school, uh, right after it came out. I hated it initially. I was really bad at it, and I put it away for months, and then when I finally went back and I started playing it again, wow, I, I was absolutely in love with it. I actually gave it a shot. I tried to get better. I, as Cranky Kong says, get good, son. And I got good, and I fell in love with the Souls series. Um... But I would say amongst those those games, like Bloodborne is my favorite. But we're not talking about those, we're talking about Neo. Neo is basically a really good combination of Dark Souls movement with Bloodborne combat. Uh, it's very fast paced, it has a lot of interesting choices for weapon styles, and you can actually fight your with your weapons in three different ways, uh, upper, lower, and middle stance and it feels like you're actually trained in the art of this weapon. The story of Neo is about uh, a man named William who travels to Japan in pursuit of an alchemist who wants to use the Amrita of Japan to fuel the war between England and Spain. And it's just a cool story, I think. It takes place at... Uh, the crucial point in the Sengoku era where the Battle of Sekigahara happens, which was the defining battle to determine if the Toyotomi clan would keep control of Japan or if the Tokugawa would take control. Uh, spoiler alert, the Tokugawa win. Um, but Neo takes it to a different level and it incorporates traditional Japanese yokai into the steer into the series uh, series and it makes such a cool story out of it by throwing all these different Japanese mythological creatures into this part of history that it almost feels like you know if if these things could have existed I could totally see this sort of thing happening uh, supposedly this was actually based off of a uh, Akira Kurosawa film 
a script that was never done. So, uh, big props on that, I guess. I mean, like, I couldn't ask for a better uh, Soulsborne game. Like, I, it blows Dark Souls out of the water. I, I can only compare it to Bloodborne with how much I like it. And I think I invested more than 200 hours into the game, so definitely check it out. The DLC is also worth uh, all the purchase. There's the definitive version on Steam as well, so go and check that out. But my number one game of the year is... You thought I was going to say Breath of the Wild, didn't you? No, it's Persona 5. Persona 5 is the fifth entry of the Persona series, which is a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei series, my favorite video game franchise. Uh, Persona 5 follows the tale of Joker, this kid who is arrested for stuff and is now living in basically a an attic. And he has to make friends and go to school and fight and do justice and things like that and it's a lot of fun um i can't i don't want to spoil any of the story because the story is so much so much fun the characters are great the uh the visual style that they went with uh continues to be great um persona always has a different genre of music that they kind of focus on for the entire soundtrack and in this case it was acid jazz which is right up my alley and i couldn't love this soundtrack more uh it's the it's one of the few soundtracks that i think beat out cuphead for me for this year um but obviously if you know anything about persona you have your daily school life where you're trying to make friends get bitches and uh get good grades and on the other side of things, you are going into the Shadow World, which in this case is the psyches of the entire globe, essentially. You are trying to steal away people's dark thoughts and make people better. And it's, it's an interesting take on things. I, I played through the game at least twice already. Uh, and it's just well designed. The combat's fun. The characters are all really well written, which is a norm in the Persona and Shin Megami Tensei series, really. Um, they did away with the custom monsters to the Persona series and went with the demons of the Shin Megami Tensei series, which was what they did in the original uh, two games, which I'm absolutely fine with. I I never get sick of seeing these designs. Uh, Kazuma Kaneko is a genius, so I, I love seeing all of these. Um, but I can't spoil anything about this game. Like, I... Go play it. Go play this game. Do it. Now. Um, or if you don't want to, you can actually look forward to the fact that it's being made into an anime. Much like Persona 4 was, and Persona 3 was made into several movies. So if you don't want to go and play a several dozen hours RPG, which I can understand, you can just check the anime out and... Hey, Maybe I'll even review it next year and do a side-by-side. -side. So, all things considered, I think this year was probably one of the best years for video games in a long time. I, I had to cut a few games off of this list because I just didn't think they compared to the other ones. Uh, like I said, Breath of the Wild just barely didn't make it in here, and that's only because after a while... I didn't like it as much as I thought I initially did. Not that I'm saying it's a bad game. It is a solid game. But I think these 10 are worth better positions. So, at the end of the day, these are my favorites for the year. Go check them out if you want. And I will see you in my next video. Love ya, boy!